Welcome to this video on the flexibility method. This is one of several videos in a short course on the analysis of indeterminate structures posted at Ter Yes Toolbox, a website that contains notes, examples, and algorithms for structural analysis. The two main categories of methods for analyzing statically indeterminate structures are force methods and displacement methods. There are several displacement methods, but just one force method. That is the flexibility method, which is addressed in this video. It is appealing to learn the flexibility method first, for the analysis of indeterminate structures, because it employs the analysis of determinate structures at its core. That is because the flexibility method introduces cuts or releases in the structure to make it determinate, followed by the use of equilibrium to analyze that determinate structure. The unit virtual load method is also employed in the flexibility method, in order to determine the deformations required to glue the cut structure back to its original configuration. The next slide illustrates this interplay of equilibrium, virtual work, and the flexibility method. At the core, equilibrium is applied to the determinate cut structure in order to find bending moment diagrams. Remember, equilibrium alone is insufficient for the analysis of statically indeterminate structures. Next, the unit virtual work method is employed to determine deformations at the locations where the structure was cut. Finally, the flexibility method pulls everything together in order to determine the final internal force diagrams for the original structure. On the next slide, we start getting into the details of the method. We start by with acknowledging that the degree of static indeterminacy, DSI, counts the surplus of forces that we are unable to determine by equilibrium equations. For example, for the beam shown here, we have four reaction forces at the supports and three internal forces in the beam. That is a total of seven unknown forces. We can set up three equilibrium equations at each of the two member ends, which sums up to six equations. The surplus of unknown forces is one. In other words, the degree of static indeterminacy is one. We use the word redundant for that surplus force. For this beam, which has DSI equal to 1, we will have 1 redundant. The frame shown below has a degree of static indeterminacy equal to 3. That means we need to specify 3 redundants. That is pretty straightforward, but specifically, what are those redundant forces? Unfortunately, there is no unique answer to that question. For the beam shown on this slide, we can select the reaction force on the right hand side as the redundant. However, it is also fine to select the bending moment at the support on the left-hand side as the redundant. Similarly, for the frame below, we could select the three reaction forces on the left-hand side as redundants, or the reaction forces on the right-hand side, or any other combination of three forces at the support or in the structure. The lack of a unique answer to the question about what, specifically, the redundants are, is the reason why the flexibility method is not well suited for computer analysis we would need to tell the computer what the redundants are, and that input would be subjective and different for different structures. This is why the flexibility method is a hand calculation method. On the next slide, we start the analysis of the beam by selecting the reaction force at B as the redundant force. We visualize that force as an arrow, shown in blue. The symbol X is used to denote the value of the redundant. We arbitrarily select the upwards direction to be positive. If we later find that the value of x is positive, then that means the reaction force is pushing upwards on the beam at that location. The flexibility method now proceeds with an important step. We remove the capacity of the structure, or the support, to carry the force that we selected as a redundant. For this beam, this means that we remove the support at B, that is why the beams shown below are cantilevers, without a support on the right hand side. It is important to note that this is now a statically determinate structure that we can analyze solely with equilibrium considerations. The symbol delta B naught denotes the displacement that occurs at B when the support is removed. Delta means displacement. The first subscript, B, identifies the location of the displacement. The subscript, naught, means that the displacement is caused by the external load that is acting on the structure. It is common to call delta B naught for a gap that opens at the location of the redundant. It is important to note that the gap, delta B naught, cannot occur in the original structure that we are analyzing. 
That is why we consider yet another beam case shown at the bottom of this slide. This is the statically determinate structure with a unit load acting along the direction of the redundant force. We consider this case because it will tell us what force is required to close the gap, namely to get rid of any displacement at B. This is expressed on the right-hand side by a compatibility equation. It says that the gap that opened due to the external load must be counteracted by the redundant force. That second term is delta BB times the redundant, because delta BB is the displacement due to a unit force. In other words, that second term is the displacement caused by the redundant force. On the next slide, we solve that compatibility equation for the redundant. The result is that the redundant is minus delta B naught over delta BB. However, we have yet to determine those delta values. That is what we use virtual work for, addressed on the next slide. The principle of virtual forces, covered in another video in this short course, says that we can apply a unit force at the location where we want to find the displacement. This leads to an interesting observation, namely that the beam case with a unit load at the bottom of the previous slide now takes on a new interpretation. It can now be seen as a unit virtual load that we can use in the virtual work method to find the delta values that we need. Carefully note this dual use of the unit load case. It is used for two purposes. The first is to reveal how flexible the structure is, namely how easy or hard it is to cause a displacement along the redundant. The other use of this loading case is as a unit virtual load that we need in the virtual work method to find both delta B naught and delta BB. That use of virtual work is shown on the next slide. The formulas shown on the right-hand side are known from the video on the virtual work method. Each displacement is calculated by integrating a virtual bending moment diagram multiplied by real curvature. That curvature is M over EI. This is when we need to be careful about what moment diagram we use. First, consider the calculation of delta B naught. In order to find this displacement, we need to apply a unit force at B that means it is the bending moment diagram at the bottom of this slide that we should consider as the virtual moment diagram. Because that diagram is the result of applying a unit force at B, we label it MB. Because delta B naught is the displacement caused by the external load on the structure, we use the moment diagram at the top of this slide as the real moment diagram. We label it M naught because it is the moment diagram due to the external load. In summary, we calculate delta B naught by combining the bending moment diagrams MB and M naught. Next, consider the calculation of delta BB. Again, the virtual work method requires us to apply a unit load at B in order to find the displacement there. That means the blue moment diagram at the bottom of this slide is the virtual moment diagram. But what is the real moment diagram in this case? Because delta BB is the displacement at B due to a real unit force at B, the real bending moment diagram is actually the same as the virtual moment diagram. In other words, we find delta BB by combining the blue moment diagram with itself. Notice the factor 1 over 4 EI that appears when we combine a parabola like the one shown here with a triangle. The factor 1 over 3 EI appears when we combine a triangle with a triangle when both triangles have the zero value at the same location. Notice that delta B naught is negative because the two bending moment diagrams shown on this slide have tension on different sides of the beam. On the next slide, we substitute the displacement values into the compatibility equation and solve for the redundant, x. The answer comes out positive, and we conclude that the reaction force at B for the original structure is acting upwards with value 3 QL over 8. However, this is not the final answer that we are after. The main objective is to determine the internal forces in the structure, namely the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram. That is addressed on the next slide, where the two formulas at the top are key to understanding the answers. The final bending moment diagram consists of M0 and MB scaled by the value of the redundant. That combination of bending moment diagrams is shown below both as a formula and as the resulting bending moment diagram. It is the combination of the two bending moment diagrams on the left-hand side that gives the final bending moment diagram on the right-hand side. The shear force diagrams are not shown here, 
but the procedure is the same. The final shear force diagram is the combination of the individual shear force diagrams that are associated with the bending moment diagrams shown on the left-hand side. The next slide reiterates the point that the bending moment value at point A could have been selected as the redundant. In that case, when we remove the capacity of that support to carry moment, the simply supported beam shown below becomes the statically determinate structure that we analyze in order to determine the ingredients of the compatibility equation. Notice that the compatibility equation is now formulated in terms of the rotation at A, it is that rotation that represents the gap that we must close with a moment. The remaining steps of the procedure for determining the redundant and the final internal force diagrams is the same as for the example covered on the previous slides. The final moment diagram will be the same as what was found earlier. The next slide gives the generic notation for a structure with two redundants. Without getting into a specific structure, we imagine that one of the redundants is located at point A and the other redundant is located at point B, that is why the letters A and B appear on this slide. Notice at the top that we need to close the gap at two locations. That is because we remove the capacity of the structure to carry force at both redundants. That is necessary in order to obtain a statically determinate structure that we can analyze with equilibrium and virtual work. It is possible that one or both of the compatibility equations are formulated in terms of rotations instead of displacements. When looking at the equations at the top of this slide, also notice that delta A naught and delta B naught are displacements caused by the external loads. In contrast, the other delta values are called flexibility coefficients. Delta AA is the displacement at A due to a unit force at A. Delta AB is the displacement at A due to a unit force at B, etc. For structures with a higher degree of static indeterminacy, we will have additional compatibility equations. Such systems of equations can be written in vector matrix notation, which is done below. The delta naught values are collected in the vector D. The flexibility coefficients are collected in the matrix F. The redundants are collected in the vector X after virtual work has been used to determine all the delta values, and the system of equations is solved for the X values. The final internal force diagrams are determined in the manner addressed earlier in this video and shown at the bottom of this slide, namely as a combination of the internal force diagrams for the statically determinate released structure. The steps given on the next slide summarize the flexibility method. First, we determine the degree of static indeterminacy of the structure. Next, we make the structure statically determinate by introducing that number of releases. Next, we draw bending moment diagrams for the determinate structure, for the acting load and for unit forces along the redundance. Next, we establish compatibility equations to avoid gaps at the releases. Next, we determine the deformations in the compatibility equations by virtual work. Next, we solve the compatibility equations for the redundant forces. In the end, we draw the final internal force diagrams by summing the individual diagrams for the determinate structure, multiplied by redundant force values. Notice that this procedure mentions only bending moment diagrams when the delta values are calculated by virtual work. This is often sufficient for beams and frame structures, because axial deformations and shear deformations are usually negligible for such structures. However, for truss structures and for frames that contain one or more truss members, axial deformations must be included. This is why the next slide shows the general formula for virtual work. From the video on virtual work, we know that this formula includes axial deformation, flexural deformation, shear deformation, support settlements, fabrication errors, and temperature changes. Any of these effects can be addressed by the flexibility method, simply by including them in this formula for the virtual work method when the delta values are calculated for the compatibility equations. The next slide follows up on that point by addressing support settlements. When settlements is what we analyze the indeterminate structure for, we have no external loads causing gaps in the released structure. Rather, it is the support settlements that cause the delta naught displacement. In other words, support settlements are simply included in the virtual work formula when the delta naught values are calculated. That is always the case, except for the special case when the settlement is occurring exactly at the location of a redundant. 
That case is illustrated on this slide, where a downward settlement is occurring at point B, where we have also selected the redundant force to be. In this case, we omit delta naught from the compatibility equation altogether. Instead, we recognize that the gap should not be closed. Conceptually speaking, we need not push the released structure all the way back to zero displacement at B. We only need to bring it to the point where that support has settled to. That is why we no longer have a zero on the right-hand side of the compatibility equation. In this case, the settlement is in the opposite direction of the redundant, so instead of zero, we have the settlement with a minus sign on the right-hand side. Notice that this will give a negative value for the redundant, x. That makes sense because the settlement shown here will be associated with a downwards acting reaction force at B in order for the beam to be in equilibrium. The next slide expands upon the inclusion of settlements, temperature change, and fabrication errors. The reason is that the internal forces in the released and statically determinate structure are zero due to such effects. As a matter of fact, a key characteristic of statically determinate structures is that they do not experience internal forces due to support settlements, temperature change, and fabrication errors. That is why the final internal force diagrams will not have any contribution from such effects. This is an important point that has a subtle extension. If we wish to calculate a deformation somewhere in the original statically indeterminate structure due to temperature change, etc., then we must include the deformation both from the final internal force diagrams and also from the effect that caused those diagrams. This can be hard to grasp, so let us think of an example. Suppose a temperature change is affecting a statically indeterminate structure with one redundant. Also, assume that we have analyzed the structure with the flexibility method, finding the final bending moment diagram by the formula shown on the left-hand side, with m not being zero, for the reason just mentioned. Next, we wish to calculate the displacement somewhere in the structure. We can do that by applying this virtual work formula to the statically determinate released structure. That means applying a unit force at the location where we seek the displacement. That gives the virtual bending moment diagram denoted by delta m in this formula. Importantly, we must include two terms in the parenthesis that multiplies with delta m. One contribution is m over ei, where that moment diagram, m, is the final bending moment diagram that we found with the flexibility method, namely MB times XB, shown on the left-hand side of this slide. The other contribution is the curvature due to temperature, namely alpha times the temperature difference over the cross-section height, H. This is the subtlety. We do not have any M not from temperature, but we do have curvature from temperature. The final slide in this video asks whether the number of redundants is always the same as the degree of static indeterminacy. It is never wrong to answer yes to that question. However, sometimes we can simplify matters for specific load cases or symmetry. That is not possible for the frame shown on the left-hand side of this slide. For this structure, the degree of static indeterminacy is 3 and we need to select 3 redundants and remove the capacity of the structure to carry those forces resulting in the released and determinate structure shown below. The beam shown on the right-hand side also has a degree of static indeterminacy equal to 3. However, this structure can actually be analyzed with one single redundant. The reason is twofold. First, there is no horizontal force acting on the structure so we know the axial force in the beam is zero. That means we have one less unknown force and therefore one less redundant. Second, the loading in the structure is symmetric. That means the moment at the left-hand side support is exactly the opposite of the moment on the right-hand side. If we find the moment value on the left side, then we immediately have the moment value on the right side. In other words, we have one less unknown force. In summary, we have only one unknown force, and that force is a moment shown with blue arrows at the bottom structure, which is a simply supported statically determinate beam. Thanks for watching this video. Please visit Tear Yes Toolbox for more videos and more material relevant for the modern structural engineer. See you soon.